I'm Sanjana Agrawal and welcome you all to Delta Awesome. I hope you all must be enjoying the fun-filled video tutorials in Delta Awesome. If you have any suggestions or you want any specific topic to be covered, let us know in the comment box. So today I'm as your mentor and I'm teaching you today is Maxillary Anatomical Landmarks. Yes, the topic is very important in theory and practical point of view. So in practical, every step of complete denture, yes, the every step of complete denture, landmarks has its own importance. So the landmarks should be at their tip of the tongue. I will be teaching you landmarks very easily and with the help of mnemonics. Yes, I will be teaching you with the help of mnemonics so that you can memorize them very easily and when the examiner asks you any question, you can answer it as soon as possible. So let's get started. So today landmarks I will be demonstrating by using this cast as patient demonstration won't be possible but for your easy correlation with the cast dem demonstration simultaneously I will showcase the clinical pictures. So you can see this color codings I have made this for your easy understanding and this codings have been taken from the second edition of Rang Rajan textbook of prosthodontics. So let's begin. So before beginning, I will share you with the mnemonic slide. Major four anatomical landmarks in four major headings we need to study them. So that is left side and right side. So for L is limiting structure, S for supporting structures, R for relief areas and S for stress bearing areas. Under these four headings, we will be studying the maxillary anatomical landmarks. So now starting with the limiting structures of the maxillary. The mnemonics for the limiting structures I have shared is left for left vena, best friend bunny vena. Humne use forever pataya. So starting with this, for this anterior you can see this elevations. These elevations are called as an frenum and they are nothing else but the fold of the mucous membranes. And you can see this yellow color depression and this red color depression. Now they are called as vestibule. So starting now this you can see this elevation anteriorly and this is towards the lip. Therefore it is a labial frenum. So this is labial frenum. Now coming towards this side this is yellow color depression you can see which is towards the lip. Therefore it is a labial vestibule. So labial vestibule. Moving little posteriorly you can see this blue color elevations on this side itself which is towards the cheek so this is buccal frenum so buccal frenum moving posteriorly this red colored depression on both the side which is towards the cheek therefore it is buccal vestibule coming towards the posterior end this orange color depressions you can visualize this is called as an hamular notch this is hamular notch and these two openings you can see which is of green color they are the gland openings and are called as in pho phobia palatini that is phobia palatini for use there is no specific landmark i have just used this for creating a proper mnemonic and the last this pink color towards the posterior end this cuspid bow shaped pink color is in posterior palatal seal area this this is a most important landmark in the maxilla. So this is our limiting structures. Label frenum, label vestibule, buccal frenum, buccal vestibule, hamular notch, phobia palatini and posterior palatal seal area. The limiting structures they are called as our caste limits till there. Our denture should be limited till year only. These structures are the limits to them. Extending beyond this will hamper our retention, stability and support. So now starting with the supporting structures of maxilla. The supporting structures of maxilla. The mnemonics is house, rabbit, rat, Mikey. So you can see this hard palate, this 
and you can see this black color elevations and depressions they are called as in rogi so heart palate rogi and this green color this is a residual ridge residual alveolar ridge r that is in residual alveolar ridge and you can visualize this blue dark blue color prominent tuberosities they are called as in maxillary tuberosity so m maxillary tuberosity so this is the supporting structures of maxilla that are rugi residual alveolar ridge and maxillary tuberosity now coming towards the relief areas of maxilla what are relief areas relief areas are those structures which need to be relief by any step of the complete denture because they have the vital structures with them and any damage to them can hamper and leads to complications mnemonic for relief area is m i phone i have made this mnemonic as it is a brand of a mobile phone and everyone can remember this easily so coming towards m that is a mid palatine raphe you can see this blue color thick band actually it is a thin line for your easy visualization i have made this thick band now these line is a fusion of two palatine bones and it is very thin so because if you give a pressure while any step during complete denture it can break and leads to complication i that is an incisive foramen which is located on the residual ridge anteriorly this which consists of nasopalatine nerves and vessels and if you give pressure to this portion it will damage the nerve vessels and blood vessels so relief is necessary for the incisive foramen and incisive foramen is a guide to know the amount of resorption of the residual ridge if the residual ridge this green portion has been resorbed very much resorbed so this blue color that is an incisive foramen becomes more prominent which help us to guide that there is a lot of resorption in the residual ridge and coming towards the p that is in palatine torus now this palatine torus is usually not present in patient but in some patient they are seen over this horizontal slopes and if there it is present it needs to be relieved so they are the relief areas of maxilla mid palatine sutures incisive foramen and sometimes palatine torus which is present over here now coming towards the stress bearing areas these areas where you can apply stress and they are of primary stress bearing areas and secondary stress bearing areas now coming towards the primary stress bearing areas you can see the slopes going towards the mid palatine raphe they are called as an horizontal slopes of the hard palate that is an edge horizontal slopes of the hard palate this is a primary stress bearing area and the secondary stress bearing areas is c crest of the residual alveolar ridge r rugis m that is a maxillary tuberosity now recently we have talked about the supporting structures of maxilla if you remember they are the same of the secondary stress bearing area that is a crest of the residual alveolar ridge rugis and maxillary tuberosity so the stress bearing structures are horizontal slope of this hard palate crest of the residual alveolar ridge rugis and maxillary tuberosity so with this we have completed the maxillary anatomical landmarks i have only covered today the anatomical landmarks of maxilla and in the next video i will explain you the muscles attached and the significance of this landmarks i hope you find this mnemonics helpful to you and if you have any other mnemonics or you have made any other mnemonics for the landmarks share it with us in the comment box if you like the video hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe the channels to get the updates of the upcoming video so till then master dentistry